you need consistent time in the word Mm -hmm. to hear the word of God, to meditate on the word of God, to study the word of God. Mm -hmm. Um, The Bible is your spiritual nourishment. Mm -hmm. Okay. The scripture is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's an offensive weapon. Um, It also helps you renew your mind. The things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Mm-hmm. So the Old Testament and the New Testament is both the Word of God. I think that I need to say that because I'm hearing too many, especially younger Christians today, discounting the Old Testament. Almost like it's, it, you know, how do we apply it today? Well, the things that were written before were written for our learning. God is immutable. That means that he does not change. Now, we're not following laws to be saved. We're being saved because we put our faith in Jesus. There's a lot of stuff in the Old Testament that are really good principles yeah. of how we should live today. Hello, everybody. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We are pumped that you are guys are with us today. We got a great episode for we you today. Do. We want to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. I'm talking about if you're not a believer, if you're new to your faith, or even if you've been saved for like 50 years, I'm telling you that this Mm -hmm. podcast is specifically designed for you. That's right. Listen, if you're new to this podcast, we want to say welcome. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. You know, we pray that God will send people um, that can be blessed by what we're putting out there. So thank you. We hope that you're going to enjoy this. Yeah. Our podcast has always had one goal in mind is to help you grow closer to God and then also closer to the people that God has Mm -hmm. placed in your life. So this is first and foremost, the marriage and relationship podcast, um, but it's also a personal growth podcast. And this is what we believe that when you get better, the marriage, the relationship that you're in will also get better. And I think today is really going to help somebody. Come on. All right. And so if you're new to our um, family, we just want to say welcome. You know, the best thing that you can do if this blesses you at all is to make sure that you like Um, share, comment, post, review. Let us know how this is being a blessing to you Mm -hmm. and our our family of doing life with Ken and Tabitha. We're growing. We're growing around the world. And so we just want to say welcome. And uh, we're so glad that you are here. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Is there anything else you have for us today? As we I don't. <laughs> Is there something I'm supposed to have today? I, I don't know. That's I don't the know. Question. Well, whatever. <laughs> today we're going to get in. Um, today's topic is entitled um, "Growing in Jesus." Uh-huh. All right, and we have one simple goal to help you guys grow in Jesus Mm -hmm. as we grow in Jesus as well. You know, what I figured out is that none of us have arrived. Mm -hmm. We are all growing in Jesus. Now, I think, how long have you been saved? Ooh, since I was 23, I got saved. And so 25 years? 25 years. Yes. Okay. I I came to Jesus when I was 11. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm 46, so that would be 35 years. I didn't start living fully for God until I was about 22, mm-hmm. but I did I did believe in God. I did mm-hmm. put my faith in Jesus and got water baptized when I was 11. So you got 25 years, I got 35 years. What I realized over a 35-year journey wow. is that it is a journey. It's a journey. Yeah. You didn't know I was That's, 35 years I didn't years know that you were 35 years, you 35 know. 35 years in the game. In the game, years. walking not, with Jesus. Listen, and not all great years. You yeah. know, I've had my ups, yeah. I've had my downs. I've had my... But it um, still matters. It still counts. You still said yes to Jesus, even at a young age. That means a lot. Well, I think it also matters the environment that you were uh, raised in. Mm -hmm. So both of my parents were people of faith. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we went to um, a a, a church. And, you know, so I I cut my teeth, which simply means that I got my training in understanding the stories of the Bible. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, uh, Moses splitting the Red Sea, mm-hmm. all of these different things, even though it seemed a little boring to me, mm-hmm. even though I really didn't grasp it fully as a kid, I did have faith in my home. Yeah. And so it was easy for me to take a step towards Jesus that way. Now, you didn't have it like that. No. W- what was your atmosphere? I mean, my mm-hmm. atmosphere is we kind of didn't, we had a Bible yeah. like in the house mm-hmm. and we kind of thought that there was a God, mm-hmm. but we didn't go to church or anything like that. And so, in fact, I remember growing up, we had this big children's Bible. Somebody gave us a Bible, you know, they would come and knock on our door and try to pray with us and everyone, I mean, all kinds of faiths would come to our doors. Um, but we had this big children's Bible mm-hmm. and in the Bible, there were pictures about everything. There was like Noah and his ark and that was a great picture. It had all of the animals and things like that. But then there was a picture of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. And there was a picture of Satan and Satan was red. He had 
horns on his head. He had like a cape on and and um, a pitchfork in his hand. Mm-hmm. And as kids, we opened up and we saw the devil and we were terrified. We closed the book and would leave it under the counter or under the uh, coffee table. And it was like, so my view of God and the Bible was like, ooh, don't open that book because the devil's in there. So like, I didn't want to have anything to do with the Bible because the devil was in there. That was kind of like my mindset. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I started to um, search for God in my early 20s, like 2021, I started looking for God. And then I finally got saved at 23. Mm -hmm. But my my path was a little different. Um, but nonetheless, um, just as powerful. So you would consider yourself unchurched? Absolutely. You was unchurched. You didn't go to church much. Um, in your childhood, how many times did you go to church? Um, I remember two times. I remember three times. Okay. One time, the first time I remember I got baptized. Mm-hmm. It was Easter Sunday, and um, my family took me to a Baptist church, and they baptized me, and I was terrified. I didn't know these people. I didn't know where I was, but I had to change my clothes and put on this blue plastic robe, and so they dunked baptized, me in the water. But you wasn't saved yet. You didn't yeah, have a relationship and I wasn't with saved yet. It was just yeah, going through the motions. And so they they baptized me in the water. Mm-hmm. Like it felt like hundreds of people in this church, right? And when I came out of the water, I busted out laughing because I was so nervous, and that's like my nervous response. And then I heard my family saying, "I think Tabby has the devil," because she was laughing during the baptism. So then I thought I had a devil. So you because the devil was in the Bible. It was in the Bible. Now devil. it's in me okay. because I got baptized. <laughs> this is really outrageous, yeah, right? Yeah. So that was the first time I remember church. The second time, I don't remember church, but I remember coming home on the bus. Okay. And the kids were singing, Father Abraham had many sons. Mm-hmm. And you would take turns going down in the seats. And I remember I ducked down in the seat and I hid. I didn't want to sing the song because I was like, I'm not one of Father Abraham's sons. Like, mm-hmm. I... I can't sing this song. So you, so you felt out of place. Yeah, I was out of place. So it was almost like the church people had this lingo and you didn't have yeah, the lingo. Yeah, I'm like, was like get well, me out of here. Right, like, I don't right. belong here. Okay. The third time I remember just being, I just remember being in a service and with a bunch of kids and being like, oh my gosh, you know, get me out of here. So again, a <laughs> different experience. Okay. Well, it, it, you know, I think so many people um, who is in our audience, they have so many different experiences. Yeah. Some people are still trying to figure out faith. Some people are new to it. Some people have been in it for a while. What I would say after 35 years in our journey of up and downs is that it is a journey. Mm-hmm. It is a journey of where God is revealing himself to us. Mm-hmm. It's a journey where God is calling us and inviting us closer to him. And um, my hope for every single person who's watching or listening is that you will make the choice to have a desire to know him better, to serve him more faithfully. And I will say this, after 35 years of being saved, I have a desire to be more intimate with Jesus now Mm. than ever, a desire to know him in his word better now Mm. than ever. And um, I got to be honest, like ministry can be taxing. You know, all of the responsibilities and the weight and all of the things that we have can be taxing. And it's almost like you have to find this balance of being tender and tough at the same time. you Mm got to be tough enough to deal with the warfare that's in the air, Mm -hmm. or you have to be tough enough to um, lead uh, and build whatever you're building. But you got to be tender enough to not block out the still small voice of God. And so when I say I'm growing in Jesus, what does that bring to you or what does it mean to you? Anything? Um, I think it's, you know, just that constant every day Mm -hmm. growing. Mm -hmm. So that reality of like, I really want to grow daily in with Jesus. So Mm -hmm. the mistake that I made today, I don't want to make that same mistake tomorrow. That's growth. That's like Jesus helped me to now, instead of getting upset and screaming at my children, help me next time speak peace, words of kindness. Mm -hmm. Let me take a moment of silence or just go and pray and be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think when I hear growing with Jesus, it is an everyday Mm -hmm. event. Yeah. I guess to me, what I hear is like, we all need to be growing in Jesus. So for me, I have not arrived Mm -hmm. and there's nobody on the planet Mm -hmm. that's arrived, you know, Mm -hmm. until we are face to face with him. Yes. And then all things are new and we're in the new Jerusalem, stuff like that. Right. None of us have arrived. So we all have this aspect of our soul that we're still renewing our mind and we're still being transformed 
We're still being sanctified, so to say. Absolutely. We're, st- we're, we're still growing it's the in pro- our faith. It's more of a process yeah. and not an event. But you can actually get stuck in growth mm-hmm. and then feel like, well, I'm not growing or, you know, and, and we can maybe talk about that a little bit mm-hmm. of, of yeah. how to get unstuck or why some people feel like they're not growing. Oh, yeah. But for me, it starts with like a choice and then it starts with a passion. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like you got to be humble and you got to be hungry, you know. And so at, in mid 40s, somehow I'm still humble and hungry that I want him, not, yeah. not in a perfect way. Like, I, I, I feel a lot of the times that I just don't measure up. I feel sometimes like, man, I should study more. I should pray more. But I still have that childlike faith in me that, like, I want to know him better. Mm-hmm. I want to serve him more faithfully. So why would you say that this is important, like growing in Jesus? Why mm-hmm. Why is that important to you? Um, I think, well, like you said, sometimes if you're not growing, mm-hmm. I think that's when you feel stuck. You feel like what am I doing in my life? Am I accomplishing anything? Am I making a difference? I'm bored. Mm -hmm. I don't like this anymore. I'm tired. Those kinds of things. I think that happens when you're not growing. Uh And so growth is, I think, intentional. It's not like, you know, when we're growing up and we grow from a, you know, from four feet to five feet, that's Mm -hmm. unintentional. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah. Uh Spiritual growth. That doesn't just happen. And growth in your soul. Uh That is intentional. Uh So we go to school starting in kindergarten and end up in high school and then go uh, uh, post-secondary education because that's intentional growth. Right. You have to do it day after day after month after year. Uh-huh. You know, that's growth. Uh-huh. Um, and so I think, what was your question? I don't know, but I mean, there's a bunch of stuff coming to my mind. I forgot my question. I forgot my, I forgot your question but, too. But let me, let me say, um, do you feel like you, you, you grow pretty well? Or do you mm-hmm. feel like you have, because, you know, we've been married for 25 years now and this is something that I feel like you do really good. Mm-hmm. I feel like you have a hunger and I feel like you're humble. And I feel like I'm always watching you every single morning, spend time with God, read the Bible, grow in your faith, mm-hmm. develop who you are as a person. And so do you feel like that about yourself? Um, not always. Uh-huh. I mean, I do know that about myself. I know that I am a self feeder mm-hmm. and I do like to grow. Mm-hmm. And so come, you know, knowing my background, Um, I've been a person, you know, just growing up where I had to figure out how to do things for myself. Mm -hmm. No one's going to give this to me. Mm -hmm. No one's going to teach me how to do this. If I'm going to do this, I have to figure out how to do this. So with that mentality, I kind of like have that in me now when it comes to God. If there's something that I don't know, and the Bible talks about searching the scripture, studying. It said that those in Thessalonica were more noble Mm -hmm. than the others because they searched the scripture daily Mm -hmm. to make sure that what was said was so, something like that, paraphrasing. And And I think there's something about us just having the discipline of, I mean, this is what I believe. I believe that every Christian needs a church Mm -hmm. home. And I believe that when you come to church, there's a level, a level of edifying mm-hmm. and development that happens that won't happen at home. But you don't get everything that you need at church. Yeah, You need to have a home time where you're searching the scriptures daily. But I believe that many Christians, they overcompensate to one or the other. They just come to church and they don't feed themselves at home or they're just somewhere reading a Bible with no leadership and no covering. But if you can ever get to the place where you have a healthy rhythm, where you have a public feeding and a personal private feeding, you have a a, a, a public gathering and you have a personal time with God, Mm -hmm. though that is the recipe for like good, authentic, healthy growth. Yeah. And I think one of the, Mm -hmm. once you become so mature as a believer, right? Mm -hmm. Once you learn a little bit of information, Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I think it as soon as you become a believer, you can begin testifying and ministering and sharing what God did for you. If if God just made you happy, say that God made you happy and tell someone else about Mm -hmm. it. Okay, Um, but I think what happens sometimes is the church, when we come to church on a Sunday Mm -hmm. or a midweek or whatever, it is also for the equipping of the saints. And so the fivefold ministry gift, which is, you know, pastor on the stage Mm -hmm. teaching. We are equipping the saints. Why are the saints being equipped? Not just to be victorious in their personal lives, Mm -hmm. but you are being equipped for ministry so that you can go out Mm -hmm. to your neighbors and your coworkers and everyone else, tell them about Jesus, Mm -hmm. minister to them, Mm -hmm. and then bring them into the house. And so I think we get bored Mm -hmm. once you're in ministry for five years or 10 years, or, you know, you've been a believer for a little bit of time, Mm -hmm. you're bored because you got to minister. Yeah. You, you've been equipped. Lead Go a small out. Group. Tell Go people on a about Jesus. Trip. Yeah. Tell people about the Lord. 
And I think that's, um, there's a lot of people who say, well, I just feel like I'm not growing. Yeah. And the reason that they're not growing is because they're not feeding other people. Right. They are just over consuming. I need another small group. I need another book. I need another podcast. Mm-hmm. And they're over consuming. Mm-hmm. But the things that we are inputting into our spirit right. is for there to be an output. Right. There has to be an intake and an outtake. There has to be an input and an mm-hmm. output. There has to be an I'm receiving so that I can get. Yeah. That's where Christianity actually gets fun and that's when it's healthy. Absolutely. One of the things that have really helped me is that I have to preach so many messages like Sunday's coming. So mm-hmm. I don't have time. Like sometimes we'll do a sabbatical where we just take off for a month or so mm-hmm. and I can see my spiritual disciplines. Like yeah. it, it's almost like the pulpit keeps me sharp. Mm-hmm. The fact that I have to feed people, the, the fact that I have to do a podcast, mm-hmm. it actually helps me grow because I'm helping other mm-hmm. people grow. Mm-hmm. And every Christian needs that. Yeah. I think there's also that point where that, that you have that point where you feel like I'm not growing because you're not you know, pouring out. Pouring out. Uh-huh. But then there's a point where you get in ministry where you can pour out and pour out and pour out mm-hmm. and you feel like you're not growing that like I'm stuck here because you're so depleted. You're so depleted. You've poured yeah. out, but you have to be intentional yeah. about pouring back in right. about growing. It's yeah. just like this give and take. This give and take. I love that. Uh, yeah. I love that. Um, what do you think prevents people from growing in Jesus? Mm. Um, complacency. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we come to Jesus because we're so needy, Mm -hmm. you know, um, stuff is going bad in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then we meet Jesus Mm -hmm. and we taste and see his goodness Mm -hmm. and we turn it around with Jesus and we come to a point of victory. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, I'm married. I have my kids now. I have my house. My job is great. Everything that I want. So now I don't really need God anymore. Mm-hmm. We don't say that. It's almost but we like back off. Right. 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 And um, all of a sudden we find out that, you know, we're not in church the way we used to be. Mm -hmm. We don't serve the way we used to. Because we got successful. Yeah. And our children aren't in church and we're not teaching those Mm -hmm. biblicals. Mm -hmm. And so I think. So what you're saying is almost like the blessing of the Lord or the success that we've had has hindered our hunger for Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Meaning that when you ain't got nothing and all, he's all you got, you're like, oh right. God, I got to pray for there to be food right. in the pantry and I got to pray for there to be lights on and I got to right. pray for all that. But then when you come to the place where you're in Canaan now and you're in that land that's flowing with milk right. and honey, if you're not careful, you don't have that same fervency. Right. And so it's actually success um, can actually work to your demise. And it's not that we don't want success right. because if you have the right mindset, you can actually glorify in your success and use your success in a way to be a blessing to other people. Mm-hmm. But it can also, if you're not careful, um, it can be something that it hinders. can, it can. And then you can get to a level of success. Mm-hmm. And when you're on that rise, it's like, thank you, Jesus. Jesus did this for me. This is what the Lord did. I prayed and I, de- you know, declared the word and you're thanking God. Mm-hmm. But if you get to that level and once you're there for a minute, you can forget that it's God who brought you here. Yeah. It's Jesus. It's your seeking him and confessing and believing right. it's your faith that got you wow. here. Wow. And so, you know, one that I'm thinking of right now that I think hinders people growing mm-hmm. in Jesus that I'm seeing very popular is what I'm calling unresolved hurt. Mm. And I just believe that there are a lot of believers that are carrying so much hurt nowadays. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's almost like a hurt pandemic. Mm-hmm. I'm not just talking about like in our church. I'm talking about in churches that I visit, churches around the nation. I mean, I haven't yeah. been everywhere, but it just feels like there are so many people that are hurt mm-hmm. and they are sitting in churches, but they're hurt. Yeah. And when you have unresolved hurt that ha- hasn't been healed, you will hear, but you're not hearing. Yeah. You're in the atmosphere, but you're not fully receiving. And a lot of it comes from church hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I was involved before. I used to be a worship leader. Mm-hmm. I used to be on staff. I used to be a team leader at mm-hmm. this last church or this last church. But right. this happened, that happened, this happened, and that happened. And now I don't know if I want to get too involved. I want to come and I want to see receive right now. I want to be in a season of sitting right now. Yeah. And a lot of that is because you haven't um, overcome the hurt that mm-hmm. you've experienced. And this is what I would say about hurt. Stay with me for a moment. Is that we are all going to be tempted with hurt. Yeah. Like you've been tempted to be hurt. Am yeah. I right? Absolutely. I've been tempted to be hurt like crazy. I've been tempted to be hurt by those who've been over me, those who've been beside me, the people that I'm trying to lead, people online. You know, we live in a world 
where the temptation to be hurt is going to mm-hmm. be so evident. You mm-hmm. can be hurt because you got let go from a job, you got let go from a position, they used to let you sing. But then there's real hurts now. Then there's some the, some hurts where somebody like they did something yeah, that was criminal like, against sorry, you. Mom. You know, and I'm so sorry yeah. that that happened, but you still can't get stuck in yeah. unresolved hurt. Hurt to me is like a wound of the heart. And if you don't allow that thing to heal, yes. you will go through life where you're bleeding. You're, it's almost like a spiritual bleeding. I don't know if you mm-hmm. can see it. It's almost like this wound that nobody can touch. Mm-hmm. And what I'm finding, like when I go into lobbies and foyers of mm-hmm. churches and I just talk to random people and, and I'm just talking to people, I'm just feeling the vibe of where we are as Christians. There are so many people sitting on their gifts. Wow. They, they come to church. Well, there's a group of people that's deconstructing and they're not coming to church. Okay. Now they've just missed it by a country mile. Then there are people who at least are coming to church and their their bodies here, but their soul ain't. Their bodies here, but they don't trust the leadership. Their bodies here, mm-hmm. but they don't have community. And they and, and what's happening is that many times I see them do a thing, well, I just don't feel like I fit in, or I just don't feel like uh, I know anybody here. Mm-hmm. And this is why, because the Bible says to have friends, you got to show yourself friendly. Yeah. But you can't have friends if you're trying to protect yourself. Mm. And there are so many people in our generation that they're coming to church and instead of having childlike faith, yeah. they're having adult faith. And adult faith, okay, and I'm just playing off the childlike faith, is a faith that's been through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been lied to. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated. I've been misunderstood. I've been the outcast. I wasn't invited to your green room. And because I've seen all of these things in ministry, outside of ministry, now the best decision for me in my mind is that I'm going to protect me. Yeah. I'm going to protect. I'm not going to let people get too close. Yep. It's like the person that w- used to be married mm-hmm. and they was all happy go lucky to get married. And then it was the worst marriage in the world. And now they're like, I don't know if marriage is for me. I want to be single all of my life. And it's not really they want to be single. You know what I'm saying? It's just that hurt has now shaped their personality right. to where they actually believe that that's what they want. And it's actually a self-protection mechanism to stop themselves from mm. future hurts. And there are too many people that have been called by God, gifted by God, anointed by God giving talents by God, but they're sitting on their gifts because they just don't want to be overused or hurt any longer, Mm -hmm. not realizing that it is a test we all must overcome. So if you don't pass the test of overcoming hurt, what happens is you lose your anointing and you're not going to be fulfilled. Wow. There are so many unfulfilled people, but if you can pass the test and get healed from hurt, you grow in authority. You grow in the anointing. Would you agree with that? I agree 100%. I think when people are hurt and when you get hurt, and I've been hurt before, I think it hinders your love walk. I think it, 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 you, you're not able to love fully. You yeah. know, like people who, like if you've been hurt in a relationship, mm-hmm. uh, the saying is love like you've never been hurt before. Mm-hmm. Love loves like it's never been hurt before. Right. And um, I think if, you know, if you're not walking in love, yeah. What are we doing here? Right. Or we, we, that's, that's everything. But you, but you know, that takes faith to do mm-hmm. that. You're mm-hmm. going to have to trust that if you do decide to trust again, get involved, yeah. and go there again, yeah. that you got to have your faith that God got you. But hurt, I mean, it, it kind of like when, when you're hurt like that, it's like unforgiveness. Uh-huh. Unforgiveness does nothing to the other person. It does everything to hinder you and to hurt you. Mm-hmm. That's what hurt does. You're hurt. The church isn't suffering because of you. Mm-hmm. Nobody else is suffering. Mm-hmm. You are the one suffering because you're not allowing love to come into your heart. You're not allowing God to use you, flow mm-hmm. in you and through you. Mm-hmm. You're not allowing yourself to get into those relationships. Mm-hmm. You're not allowing yourself to step into new territory. And so I think we have to open up our heart. But you said something about deconstruction, and I just, we don't have to talk about it, but I don't even know. Like, I'm not even entertaining the whole deconstruction thing. (laughs) It's just not my thing, okay? I just, I don't do it, but... I, I don't know. I think if you are a believer, we have two examples here. We have Lot's wife, okay? Uh-huh. Lot's wife looked back, okay, and turned into the pill- pillar of salt. That is a principle that right. we take. We don't look back. And the Bible also says that a man who puts his hand to the uh, to the plow mm-hmm. and turns back, mm-hmm. what does the Bible it's say? It's not fit for the kingdom. It's not fit for the kingdom. Yeah. Deconstruction is not, it yeah. is no, yeah. no. That's all I had to I, say. I'll jump just on that no. real quickly because you did bring it up. I'm sorry. So somebody asked me the other day, they said, Pastor Kim, what do you think about deconstruction and deconstructing your faith? And I said, I don't think about it. I don't think about it at all. At all. I'm too busy winning souls for what Jesus and world? making disciples and preaching the gospel around the nations to be thinking about it. I think what, what happens is you that... You have to be bored. That's what we were saying. Uh-huh. Go out and minister to people, anybody. Yeah. Well, what happens is that people are going through things and then they begin to question what they've taught before. 
But this is what I need somebody to hear is that you can deconstruct your whole life every single day because there's things that you know today that the next week you'll be like, ah, that was the wrong tone. Ah, you got a new revelation because revelation is progressive. Right. So if you think that you have perfect faith right now, you are being deceived. You have growing faith right mm-hmm. now. And what you know right now, you'll know something better next year. And right. then in two years, you'll know something better. And in five years, God willing, you're going to know something better. Right. And so if you're going to deconstruct your faith because you felt like maybe you got faulty information before, yeah. you're going to be deconstructing everything. And a lot of people don't understand that deconstruction has to be for reconstruction. If you're going to, if you're going to say, let me analyze what mm-hmm. I got going on. It's only to build back something that's better. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for me, and that's why me and many, uh, from us, that's just not my tone. That's just not, now people can go ahead and do whatever they want to do because that's what people are going to yeah. do. But I just feel like many people try to be so deep. Yeah. And the gospel ain't that deep. It's, it's not. very simple. It's amazing that people are like, well, what does the Bible say in the Old Testament and the Hebrew and the Hebrew? And this was the, you know, they try to get so deep. I'd be like, are you tithing? And like that's elementary. Basics. Do you just take a first of what God gives to you? Well, no, 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 because the priest and, and the priest and the Levites and they did this and they, the the and was really okay. But what do you do? Like, why do we gotta be so deep? Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, do you just like okay? God gives you something, take something, take the first part of it and give back to Him. Do you serve in church? Well, you know, the Hebrew and in the in the in the in the, in the, in the Levitical priesthood and the tabernacle and the third heaven and and, and, the, and the Shekinah glory. Okay, <laughs> no. Do you just are you nice? Like, are you kind uh, to people? Yeah. Do you have the fruit of the spirit yeah. like what well, do you know the eschatology do you the, talk the, to the and, lord and the do you pray and the, and the, and the bible prophecy the bible? and daniel like do you just basic i mean like basic stuff yeah yeah and what i found out is that the deeper you are the more mm-hmm. simple you are mm-hmm. like jesus was a very simple man he talked he, in parables he would talk about wheat yeah and, and and tares he would talk about like sheep and goats he would use like agricultural terms. You're the salt of the earth. He's talking to people. The who light of the world. Are in an agricultural community. Mm-hmm. He's talking like using like everyday mm-hmm. stuff. So my job as a preacher is not to go into the Hebrew and to the Greek and to give you something that's so complex that you got to go go fast for the next three months to figure out what the heck I said. Right. My thing is to take stuff off the top shelf and put it on the bottom. Yeah. Where like babies can so understand. So everybody it. can I partake. I need everybody to be. Mm-hmm. So it's not that you want to be deep. You want to take deep spiritual truths. Mm-hmm. that are so deep but make them so simple mm-hmm. that people can digest them and apply them. Yeah. So to me, the deeper people, the, the like the real deep thinkers mm-hmm. are the people that have application. Yeah. It's the people that know how to live it out Monday through Friday and then they have fruit mm-hmm. and they also have faithfulness. But I don't so know. good. I wanted to look at Colossians today mm-hmm. and then I want to give some, 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 these like these things that I, uh, that I see out of Colossians about how to grow in Jesus um, you know, I've been, I was reading the book of Colossians. I went back and read it again, mm-hmm. went back and read it again, because I'm really wanting to grow in this, this love for Jesus and understanding of Jesus. You know, I love the God, the Godhead, the triune nature of God, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit in each attribute of his person. It kind of shows me a different aspect of God mm-hmm. and, and, and Jesus as the son of God, Emmanuel, the one who died for us, our savior, our Lord. I'm just really focusing on Jesus mm-hmm. right now. I, I think you feel that as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the person you, of Jesus. You had a dream about Jesus, and I'm going to let you share it. Well, I uh-huh. want to read Colossians very quickly. Let's see what we get out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colossians 1 and 15, it says that the, the son is the image of the invisible God, and he's the firstborn of all creation. Mm-hmm. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from from the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Mm -hmm. Um, As I'm reading through the book of Colossians, I see it really focused on Jesus and, and revealing who he is as sovereign and, uh, and supreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, does anything stick out to you from that passage? Um, I just see Jesus as I, I see, you know, like a king on the throne mm-hmm. um, and who is God. I just see Jesus as the son. Mm. And I guess he's the king, you know, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But next, you know, I see God and I see him being like, Mm-hmm. A son who has been crowned mm-hmm. king by a father who ruled 
you know, well, Mm -hmm. um, who like the father entrust everything to this son. It's like, I'm so proud of you. You know, like he said, um, this is my son in who I'm in well pleased. Mm -hmm. And I just see like, I don't know that it's just the sonship of Jesus. I love verse, um, 15 here. Uh, it says the son is the image of the invisible God. Yeah. And he's the firstborn of all creation. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, it's, it's talking about the deity of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so um, Orthodox Christianity is Jesus was all God and all man mm-hmm. all at the same time. He didn't stop being divine when he became son. But I, the best way I can describe it and in, 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 uh, help me with this mm-hmm. is that he put aside his divinity to walk fully as a man. Mm. And so he was the substitute that paid the price for our yeah. sin. And the reason because of that, and, and, and I'm kind of getting off now, is because God created laws in the earth. And one of the laws that he created is that to let man have dominion. Mm. And so when he said he gave men dominion and authority, Adam and Eve lost that dominion or mm-hmm. they sinned and disobeyed God. And because the laws of God said God had given men dominion, only man could get that dominion back. Right. So now in the ultimate plan of God, um, Jesus, the man God, the God man, Emmanuel with us, he comes back, lives a sinless life. He leads captivity captive, basically goes to hell, sets the captive free, appears for 40 days with infallible proof after the resurrection, and basically wins us back to the right relationship with God Mm -hmm. the Father, meaning that we are righteous not because we do right things, but because Jesus um, took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave, paid the price for our sin, busted hell wide open, and now when we make him Lord and Savior. So I I, I run that down because that's like the gospel in 30 seconds, but this is where I'm coming back to. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is God, Mm -hmm. God in the flesh. And when it says the Son is the image of the invisible God, Jesus is the expressed Mm -hmm. image of everything that God is. Mm -hmm. And to know that is to love him, Mm -hmm. to know that is to praise him, Mm -hmm. to know that is to lean into him, to know that, that this God of all of the universe loves us so much that he put on flesh, Mm -hmm. drank the water that we drank, eat the food that we ate, walk this land to buy us back from our disobedience Mm -hmm. so that we could be forever with him in Mm -hmm. heaven and eventually the new Jerusalem. And so for people who say, well, how do I start growing in Jesus? You got to start by loving him. Right. And you start by loving him by understanding that he got on a cross. And you got to take that personal. Like this man died for me. Mm -hmm. This man died. This wasn't just like some kid. This wasn't just like some guy off the street. This was royalty. Right. This was someone who was robed in heavenly garments and royalty who had authority. Yeah power, dominion, yeah. who chose to leave heaven and come to earth right. for, us. for us. Like, it's and, a big and deal. pay a price that we couldn't pay ourselves. Right. And so I've studied religions for 20 years. Every other religion and cult, whatever it is, is people trying to get to God. Mm-hmm. Christianity is the only one where God says, you're not holy enough to get to me. Let me come and get you. Absolutely. So God steps out of heaven. Mm. And he becomes a man to pay the price for our sin. And that's why Christianity is such a beautiful love story. It's not a religion. It is a relationship that we Mm -hmm. get to have Mm -hmm. with a father who loves us being restored by his son. So good. And Uh we talk about growing and reaching other people and Uh telling people about Jesus. We go out and tell other people because Jesus came out, (laughs) you know, for us. And, you know, it's just, it's what we do. You recently said you saw a vision of Jesus mm-hmm. in our sanctuary. I did. Yeah, can you tell it was me about a dream, that? actually. Mm-hmm. I had a dream, and um, we were just in the sanctuary, like a regular service, and Jesus like appeared mm-hmm. in our services. He was standing there, mm-hmm. and kind of like I can only describe it as you know, watching the chosen, just the old kind of garments and things like that. He was just mm-hmm. like in his in in a like Jesus on the earth type of representation, not with like a crown and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he was standing there and he had a, a bunch of, it was angels. It wasn't like regular man because they look like I couldn't see clearly, but it was just like huge, like figures, like an army of Mm -hmm. real like angels behind Mm -hmm. him. And um, he was just standing there like I'm here, Mm -hmm. like um, watching services. And so service was going on and uh, somebody was preaching. I don't know what was going on, but I remember I was looking like, um, oh my gosh, Jesus Jesus just manifested. He's here. Mm-hmm. Does anybody else see this? And then it was just like 
when the when when the when he left, mm -hmm. I looked around to the audience to see, and it was funny because there was like a bunch of men in the audience that I was looking at. I looked at the audience to see, like, I thought I was dreaming. Like, is this real? Am I like hallucinating? Mm -hmm. And they weren't saying anything. Everybody was just like, just like shocked sitting there. And so I started like shaking people and asking people, hey, did you see that? Did you see that? And they couldn't speak, but they had tears coming down their eyes just saying, right. And like shaking their head because wow. Jesus manifested wow. in the presence. Wow. Man, I would love to hear from our audience of what you think that could mean. I'm, I'm sure that there is a interpretation mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. have for that. Um, for me, um, I believe that Jesus want to manifest himself in our day and time more than ever. Mm -hmm. I just believe that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Jesus is, is manifesting himself in our mm -hmm. church. And I believe he's manifesting himself in churches across the globe. Mm -hmm. And not just in buildings, but wherever his mm -hmm. name is being lifted up. Um, I just believe he's drawing men to himself. I believe that we live in a great time of revival and the outpour of the Holy Spirit. I believe stuff is pretty dark in our world today. I believe Absolutely. that light of the glory of Jesus is about to shine brighter than ever. And so I kind of wrote down some things of how to grow in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted to leave with some real practical steps because you know how we do. Come on. But um, for those of you all who are watching and you're like, man, how do I grow in this relationship with Jesus? You know, I'm kind of working with my children right now. And I'm sure those of you all who are parents, you know how this is, as you're trying to move your children from being natural to being a little bit more spiritual. Um, the question is always, how do we help them have their own relationship with Jesus? I don't want my kids just coming to church because I come to church. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want them just reading the Bible because I told them to read the Bible. I want them to have like this inner desire to seek for him themselves. But when I think about my children, I also think about us, like you and me, mm -hmm. that we all are just like children sometimes, that we need to make a decision that He's who we want. Mm -hmm. We need to put a priority in our life that he's going to be first before golf, before shopping, before traveling. God's going to be first in my heart and in my mind. And I just believe that when you knock it to be open, mm -hmm. you know, the scripture says it's in the heart of a king to search out a matter, but it's the glory of the Lord to conceal things. That. And there's many things that God has concealed and it's only an invitation to come and seek. And so I'm going to give you like, I think I wrote down five things of mm -hmm. how to grow in Jesus. And uh, you can jump in whenever, because okay. I know this is going to spark a little bit of conversation. But number one, you need consistent time in the word mm -hmm. to hear the word of God, to meditate on the word of God, to study the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible is your spiritual nourishment. Mm -hmm. OK, the scripture is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's an offensive weapon. Um, it also helps you renew your mind. The things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Mm -hmm. So the Old Testament and the New Testament is both the word of God. I think that I need to say that because I'm hearing too many, especially younger Christians today, discounting the Old Testament, mm -hmm. almost like it's, it's, you know, how do we apply it today? Wow. Well, the things that are written before were written for our learning. God is immutable. That means that he does not change. Now, we're not following laws to be saved. We're being saved because we put our faith in Jesus. But there's a lot of stuff in the Old Testament that are really good principles yeah. of how we should live today. Um, anything you want to speak to that as it relates to being consistent in the word? Because I see you, you're consistent in the word. Um, uh, but it's intentional. <laughs> okay. It's intentional because uh -huh. I'm not naturally, there's so many things to do. You know, we have three kids. Uh -huh. I'm a wife. Um, I have a job. Yeah. There's all kinds of things, you know, that I need to do. So I'm intentional with my times. And so there's two times a day for me that I'm typically inten intentional. That's in the morning. Okay. Um, I know that I have to seek God first because if I don't, um, there's too many things to do in the day. I don't see him. Right. Um, and then at night before I go to bed, just okay. to make sure I read a scripture, mm -hmm. um, anything like that. So it's two times a day that I'm touching God. But I heard a new one that I'm about to do. I haven't done this yet. But um, someone told me that they set a timer on their phone. Mm -hmm. And then when that time rings, you know, like they will pray at that or, or do certain things for the Lord, read the word or whatever. But I just wanted, I was like, you know what? I need to put a timer on my phone, like around lunchtime, just so that I can like read a scripture or pray or something to be more intentional. That was just my personal thing, but you can mm -hmm. set an alarm. Yeah. I mean, there's so many apps out there to help you read the Bible. You know, I, I yeah. take prayer walks every morning pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do a thing where I'll take a jog and I try to listen to a podcast or listen to a oh, message. Yeah. I'll always spend time, you know, and so uh, we won't labor on that one. How to grow in Jesus, you need consistent time in the word. Number mm -hmm. two, you need to receive the Holy Spirit in his fullness. Yes. Okay. Because the scripture says he's our parakletos. That is a um, Greek word for comforter, which means that he is our standby, our advocate. He is our leader guide, and he leads us into mm -hmm. all truth, the scripture mm -hmm. says. 
And I think that sometimes we try to make the Holy Spirit like a distant third cousin to the Trinity, and he's co-equal and co-powerful with God the Father and God the Son. And uh, when you accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you. There's a separate experience where he comes, or a second experience where he comes upon you, giving you power from on high. But everything that the Holy Spirit is giving, you should go after it. Yeah. Go after the gifts. Go after having a relationship with him. Why? Because he is the person of God that is in the earth. Mm -hmm. And he is the one that reveals Jesus to us. He is the one that illuminates scripture. So right now where I'm like, man, I want to know Jesus better. I'm like, Holy Spirit, help reveal Jesus to me more. Help me know. And that's one of the things the Holy Spirit loves to just reveal Jesus. Mm -hmm. When people get saved, it's not because of a good sermon. It's that the Holy Spirit has revealed Jesus. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, people can see their need for him. Mm -hmm. Anything on that one, sweetheart? I think that's really good. So the Holy Spirit is like God's power in Uh the earth. You know, So every time we feel the presence of God, that's always the Holy Spirit. I just feel like that was important to say. And it's not hard to seek the Holy Spirit. It's not hard to receive the Holy Spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit. I personally ask the Holy Spirit. Um, to um, just uh, to fill me um, in my bedroom alone as a baby Christian, you know, on my knees, I kneeled at my bed and said, I want Holy Spirit come into my heart, come, you know, into my life. I want you in my life. And he did. Um, And so it's not something that the world has to know. It's something that can be private that you can do on your own. Um, easy peasy. I hear the word gentleness because I believe that Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman Mm -hmm. and he, he wants to be invited in. He will not kick down the doors of your heart for you to know him. He is Mm -hmm. a very, uh, he's gentle, but powerful, you know, but anyway, number three is how do you grow in Jesus? You got to remove the things that would hinder growth, Mm -hmm. known sin, like habitual sin Mm -hmm. will just hinder your relationship with Jesus, Mm -hmm. toxic relationships. You're going to have godly people in your life and ungodly people in your life. You must know who's in a court and out of court. Wow. Ungodly atmospheres, Mm -hmm. ungodly music, um, things that will come into your ear gate that affects your heart. The scripture says, guard your heart above all else, for out of it flows the issues of life. Unresolved hurts, like we talked about, traumas, strongholds, all right? All of those things can actually be a hindrance to your growth in Jesus. Wow. Anything else? No, that's good. Yeah. Number four is um, hunger and humility. Mm-hmm. If you want to grow in Jesus, which, you know, this has kind of been the whole thing of what we're talked about today, but you yep. got to be humble and hungry. Yeah. Humble and hungry. Everybody say humble and hungry. Humble and hungry. Um, you have to know that you need him. You have to go after him. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to bow the knee. And I say, you're the Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. I want to do what you want me to do more than what I want to do. Okay. Um, You need passion. Okay. Passion, fervency. Um, The same passion, like I I can talk to guys, the same way that you would go after a woman that you wanted Mm -hmm. is the same way you have to go after Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That might sound weird, but what I'm saying is that there's a level of like, that's what I want. That's what I'm going to get. Every person has to say, he is what I want. He is my great reward. That's that's he is the apple of my eye, the center of my affection. I am mm-hmm. going after him. Mm-hmm. That's a choice. Absolutely. Um, anything else on that? No, that that's uh-huh. good. Um, there was something that I was going to say. I forget now. <laughs> okay. Well, if it comes back to you, just let me know. Yeah, it was that that thirst and hunger for God. Mm-hmm. It's just. Well, I'll give you number five um, as it relates to growing in Jesus is surrender. Mm-hmm. You know, where you just wave the white flag. And, yeah. and I think there's uh, many people watching this, listening around the world that just need to mm-hmm. need to give away your life wow. for the life that he has mm-hmm. for you. You just need to wave the white flag and say, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. And I don't know enough. He knows more than I do. He's smarter than I do, uh, smarter than I am. And God, I just surrender. Mm-hmm. And so I, I felt like I wanted to just take a moment and just lead people in a prayer of salvation because Absolutely. knowing Jesus starts with surrender mm-hmm. where you just say, you know what? Jesus, I want you to be a part of my life. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just do life with Ken and Tabitha. I first and foremost want to do life with Jesus. Yeah. I want to know you better. I want to serve you more faithfully. And if you're watching this or listening to this and you're like, I've never prayed the prayer of salvation, or if you've prayed that prayer, but you're still disconnected from God, mm-hmm. you don't have to bow your head. You can if you want to. You can close your eyes, but just say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, mm-hmm. come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. I turn away from my sins, and I put my trust in you. Jesus, I believe you died on a cross so that I could live forever with you. On today, I make you the Lord of my life. I surrender my life 
for the life that you've called me to live. I'm saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I even want to pray for those who, you know, maybe they want to rededicate their life to Mm -hmm. the Lord. You know, Mm -hmm. maybe they're just, or maybe there's people out there who's like, you know what? Um, I haven't been growing in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've been stale or I've been stuck. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't been passionate and I want to get that back. Could you just Mm -hmm. maybe just take a few seconds and just pray over the the stale stuff? Absolutely. I just want to release the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit upon everyone who is listening right now and joining in in agreement with this prayer with us right now, that Holy Spirit, you will begin to just stir up their faith again. Those who are hungry, those who are thirsty because they're, they've been in a spiritual drought. Maybe they've been hurt. Maybe they've just given up and stopped seeking you. Some have been listening to the lies of the enemy. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will open up the eyes of your understanding to open up your, um, your ears and your heart to receive what God has for you. Holy Spirit, stir up faith, stir up hunger, stir up a thirst for the anointing of God to be manifested in their lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, if you enjoyed today, we we got we want to hear from you. Please write us in. There's an email address in the bottom. You can write a review if this has been good to you. Like, share, comment, subscribe right now. We love to hear from you. Be a part mm. of our family. Our community is growing, and we're just helping people grow closer to Jesus and closer to the people that Jesus has placed in your life. We're so honored to have you join in with us today. Yes. Um, listen, we drop a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. You can hit the subscribe, hit the icon if you're on YouTube. If you're watching um, or listening via podcast, just hit the download button and do whatever you got to do to make sure that you're the first to get the content whenever mm-hmm. it is released. All right. Um, we got a couple of products and we've created some things just to help married people because God knows married people need <laughs> help. All right. We have a Devo, a 90 day Devo called the Marriage um, 90 Day uh, uh, Better Marriage Devo that you can get hold of. And we also have a Better Marriage Boot Camp. It's yes. a 90 day journey where we could be your marriage coaches. Um, for more information about our marriage online boot camp, you can check out our show notes or go to kenandtabitha.com and just know that we love you because we love God. You are honored, you are valued, and the best is truly yet to come. And when you get better, the marriage gets better. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.